All right, let's get reaction now from Capitol Hill. Republican Senator from Tennessee and member of the Senate Housing and Urban Affairs, Foreign Relations and Appropriations Committees. Senator Bill Haggerty now joins us live from Nashville. Senator, thanks so much for spending your Saturday with us for a little while. I want to Certainly. start with Title 42 and this uh, ruling. Obviously, uh, it's going to stay for now, but at some point, realistically, Title 42 is going to go away. I know that you and other members of your party want a vote in the Senate on Title 42 to keep it in place. Do you think you can get that support now uh, from the other side of the aisle now that we've seen this ruling come down? Do you think you can get that support? Well, all this ruling is is, is a stay of execution. We still have a massive crisis at the southern border. This past month saw the greatest number of illegal immigrants come into the country that we've ever seen. And in my home state of Tennessee, we still have each month more overdoses and more deaths from fentanyl coming across that border than we've ever had before. It gets worse by the month. The Biden administration is doing everything they can to transform America, and Title 42 is the last tool left for our Border Patrol agents to actually push back. Again, it's a public health usage. I think the biggest public health crisis, frankly, is the deaths from overdoses that are being created here. Again, the biggest killer of young Americans between the ages of 18 and 45 right now in America is overdose deaths. You know, the uh, Biden administration will not acknowledge it. Senator DHS Secretary Mayorkas has been on the Hill quite a few times now, and um, I know that several of members of your party believe that the administration is failing in its immigration policies, but Mayorkas and others would say that Congress isn't doing enough uh, for immigration reform. Are you willing to work with your Democratic colleagues on the Hill to come together and put together some kind of immigration reform package to deal with this in the long term? I'm willing to work with the Democrats. I'm willing to work with anybody to get this problem fixed, but no one on the Democrat side will step up. I put forward legislation to actually expand Title 42 and to include the, as in, among the public health crises that was trying to combat drug overdose deaths and the concern of that. I couldn't get a single Democrat to join me in that conversation. We're going to continue to push on this, but as you say, uh, Congress is ready to act, at least on our side of the aisle, to make Title 42 permanent, but also we need to put the migrant protection protocols back in place. That was actually working. Biden won't even go to the border and address this crisis, and it's really just crushing America. One last question on Title 42 and immigration before I want to get to inflation as well. Sure. Um, I went to Mexico just last weekend to the San Diego Tijuana border and saw things on the ground firsthand. And what I saw mm -hmm. were was that there are places in Mexico that are that offer stability and offer safety for some of these migrants. Um, should Mexico be doing more to incentivize some of these people coming from those triangle countries? Should Congress be putting more pressure, the administration be putting more pressure on Mexico to do more? Well, that's exactly what President Trump did when he implemented the migrant protection protocols. He put a tremendous amount of pressure on the Mexican government. They actually began to patrol the border again. Now that border has been ceded to the cartels. I think it's going to be very difficult for Mexico to do anything without us putting pressure on them, but they should. They should do a lot more. And I think what we'll see is if, if we would go back to the policies that were working, we would have a tremendous impact on reducing this crisis. But instead, people are just piling up on the other side of the border. They are being turned away under Title 42, but the Biden administration keeps sending signals that they're going to do away with it. Again, if they do away with it, we're going to see a tsunami of people coming in. It's a crisis that will turn into a massive disaster. And, Senator, really quickly on what everyone is talking mm -hmm. about right now, which is gas prices. If we can pull up yeah. the prices on the screen, uh, you can't go anywhere in this country anymore and not pay more than $4 a gallon, yet Congress just approved a $40 billion aid package to send to Ukraine, which got some Republican pushback, including you. You voted no on that. This week, very interestingly enough, the New York Times editorial board wrote a piece urging the president uh, to reconsider our investment in Ukraine, or at least come up with a more detailed plan, an end game. Uh, and they write this, as the war continues, Mr. Biden should also make clear to President Volodymyr Zelensky and his people that there is a limit to how far the United States and NATO are willing to go, will go to confront Russia and limits to the arms, money, and political support they can muster. Mm -hmm. Senator, do you believe that Ukraine can win this war, or do we need to start coming up with some kind of end game, a compromise, perhaps? Well, Ukraine can win the war, and we need to come up with a fully strategic approach to this. The best thing that we could do would be actually end the war on American energy here. That would defund Vladimir Putin's war machine. That's what we need to do first and foremost. The $40 billion that we're sending over there right now, that's the size of my state of Tennessee's entire annual budget. 
there have to be limits to this. You know, the Biden administration is willing to spend on things like this with very little oversight, very little detail is, is, is involved in this. There isn't an end game in sight. We should be walking side by side, marching side by side with our colleagues in Europe. They're not stepping up to this level. Right now, we're at parity with them, but with this $40 billion, we're jumping way ahead of them, Forex what the Europeans are spending, and they're more proximate to the problem. We need to be bringing them along. We need to be looking at this holistically. Yeah. We need to be solving the energy crisis at the same time, and that would address inflation here at home. And I imagine as gas prices continue to rise and we keep seeing things like the baby formula shortage happen, yep. Americans will continue to ask those questions. Senator, thank you Indeed. so much for joining us on Thanks. this Saturday. Have a great day. Thank you very much. Subscribe to the Fox News YouTube channel to catch our nightly opens, stories that are changing the world and changing your life. I'm Tucker Carlson tonight.